Let's stand on our feet. Thank you, God. What a great time to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 We might teach you a new song. And it requires crowd participation. Let everything that I bring praise the Lord.
Lord, we lift your name high above every other name. Thank you, Lord. 
praise your name in this place this evening. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We've come together to exalt you, to fellowship together, and to lift your name up. Hallelujah. Awesome one. Praise your name. Thank you, Father. Awesome one. Hallelujah. Thank you, church. Great to see you in the house this evening. Another Raymond Family Church Holy Ghost welcome to the, the Robertsons again tonight. So great to have you here. Cool. Let's just go say he hello to someone briefly. We'll be back shortly. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. We bless the children as they go in Jesus' name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus
stronghold I heard the Lord say you know strongholds are also fear strongholds are um, you know thinking negatively he's saying I can break every stronghold every stronghold I can break addiction I can break uh, you know addictions I hear you know addictions just being broken off you know this is a this is a prophecy we declare this over ourselves Lord you break every stronghold Lord you are king of everything Father, you just burn away everything that is not of your will, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is fullness of life. Thank you, Jesus. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. this one more time with all of our hearts come on your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the
Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Father, we just thank you for your presence. It's yes, Lord Jesus. The Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Lord is here. Thank you. Every good and perfect thing is from above. And it's the Father's heart to bless you. It's His heart to bless you. It's all available. It's all available. He says, take me at my word. Believe me for my goodness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Justified freely by faith. Peace here in your woman. To the grace of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Boldly by faith now I come. Straight to the throne by the sun. Strengthened and filled with God's love for revival now. Thank you, Lord. We believe for revival. Glory, your revival. Glory, your revival. Glory, you are here. Justified freely by faith. Peace here in your warm embrace. Now we have by faith to the grace of God. Boldly by faith now I come straight to the throne by the sun strengthened and filled with God's love for revival now. We believe for revival
us will sing. We believe for revival. Glory, a revival. Glory, a revival. Glory, you are here. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We weren't planning on doing this song, but I know the Lord's with us Thank at all times Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. but there are moments that I think we need to respect I really believe the Lord is here in a big way and I to touch every life we are standing on hold Father, we just thank you, thank you Lord God. that you are here thank you, Jesus. in your presence and in your power thank you. 
and in your love. Father, we just thank you tonight that we open ourselves for whatever you want to do. We just thank you for your presence. Let us pray. good is our God, church? Amen. How good is our God and worthy of all of our praise? Amen and amen. Thank you, praise the Lord. Well, if you, if you want to stay there, hang on. So <clears throat> I felt during the worship that there's a few of you, there's, there's, mo there's multiple of you that are needing some things. And, you know, it, you're kind of praying about it. You're kind of not. You're not sure. If, you know, that's something you can go to God to. And God's saying, come to me with that. You know, he's saying, let me show you my goodness. You know, and there's, there's some of you that are believing for some pretty, that you're hoping, I'll say hoping, you're hoping for some big stuff. You would like some big stuff. God's saying, I am not a small thinker. This is the God of creation. He says, test me, ask me, let me show you my goodness. I feel there's a few of you. You know, God is saying, let me show you, just ask me. You know, God's really um, challenged Peter and I this year with small thinking. And he, he really spoke to us on multiple times, corporately and separately, you know, to expand our vision, expand the, expand the vision. And we have, and he has, of course. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you for your goodness. Lord, I thank you that every good thing is from you. And Father, you are looking for ways to bless us. Lord, I thank you that you're a good, good Father and that we can rely on you, Lord, and that we can trust you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Jesus. Thank you. Honestly, you guys are dangerous. If it wasn't for the fact that I know I have a specific prophetic word for this church, we would just keep going. Just take your seats for a moment. If you're out in the front having a moment with the Lord, continue that because we're going to go back. Um, look, we've got resource at the back. Go buy it. End of advertisement. Praise the Lord. I want you, I'll come down here. I want you to hear what I say tonight as not a sermon, but the Lord in his love speaking to his family. I, um, I may have said it and you may have all heard me say it, but uh, this church means a lot to me. This was the very first church I ever ministered in New Zealand, the whole of New Zealand, 20, 26 years ago, this church. This church was also the first church that my wife and I, oh, I'm going to get emotional, <laughs> ministered as a husband and a wife. Such a blessing. So when I, when I really prayed, you know, I'd have been happy, man, I could just do what we just did all night and be a happy, 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 happy man. But I really felt the Lord had something he put in my heart specifically for this church. We've been talking about because of the time that this is, this is the Feast of Trumpets, it just ended. And when you study it, it was a time of preparation. And I, I really feel as a church, God is bringing and preparing you for something that's absolutely beyond what you could ask or even imagine. And, and I feel tonight, I just pray you hear this word, because 
I'm just going to be completely blunt and honest because I don't know any other way to say it. It can't just happen because of a couple of leaders. For this church to achieve everything that the, the Lord has for it, which is just glorious, it requires all of us to own a part of what God is doing. Paul talked to his partners, his, the people that God had surrounded him with to bring the gospel to the world. And he talked about that their prayer and their supply of the Spirit would help him achieve that for which God had called him to do. And sometimes we can think, well, who am I? What can I do? But, you know, years ago I, I ministered at a church that was known for revival. In fact, it was known all over the world for revival. A tiny little town, Smithton, Missouri, uh, 500 people in the town, yet in about six years, over half a million people visited this church. Do the math. That's a move of God. And they actually outgrew their, they outgrew their, um, their premises and so they, because there was no infrastructure in the town. There was nowhere to spend money. They didn't even have a, you couldn't, there was no phone box. Back in the day when there was phone boxes, there was, there was nowhere to spend money. The pastor used to say, you might as well put it in the offering. There's nowhere else to spend it. <laughs> no petrol station, nothing. And so they're having hundreds of thousands of people coming from all over the world. So they moved to Kansas City, which is about two hours away. Kansas City, Missouri. And so I'm ministering in a beautiful new facility, which is huge. And we're having pre-service prayer. And the place was full. So my Aussie brain started to kick in and go, where's everyone going to go? Because you'll only get 10% of your people to pre-service prayer. <laughs> and then the service got to close time and we started and only a handful more came. Now, I'm not saying this to condemn you, but the revelation I got when talking to these people, because some of these people would work, have farmed. Some of them were farming, so coming to a meeting, harvesting all night, and they were in church Sunday morning. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it sounds terrible. Like, what is wrong with you? You know, <laughs> what? And they all said the same thing. They said, I can't miss a what God is doing because I'm a part of it. I'm a part of what God is doing in this house. And, and I think we have dishonored the blood when we don't think that we've got a part that is worth anything. And I want to move on this morning from what Pastor Barry, the last point he had was he talked about the fear of God, but the fear of like this awesome reverence and awe. You know, we, we get this picture... Yeah, it says every initial bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, right? And some people get this picture that like on that day, it's like God will just force them. You say it. Now, he won't have to. He won't have to. The Bible says he measures the waters of the earth in the palm of his hand. The earth of his, is his footstool. He had to hide his full glory from Moses because he knew if he, if he saw it all, it would kill him. That's how awesome our God is. And so I want to, I want to, some things tonight, this word just kept coming up in my spirit. Honor the blood. Honor the blood. You are, most of you will know my dad in the ministry, Cole Stringer. We all know Crocodile Cole, right? I, I, they're like mum and dad to us and I so thank God for them. But can I tell you, as far as being the man who God called to mentor an international worship ministry, Cole is about as musical as a rock. <laughs> Literally. But do you know what? I learned so much about worship because it also made me realize worship and praise is not just for the musical. I thank God for the incredible resource we have today. We provide resource. We've got resource out there. People sing our songs all over the world. And we can go, all those songs, Nelly, we sang tonight, you can get on and see the original worship artists with their incredible voices and amazing talents and all of that. And, but we can sometimes begin to think that that is for the musical, for the young, the pretty, the strong, whatever, the talented. But my Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And, and I'm, my concern is, as a worship minister, is that we have such excellence in the church, and I thank God for it. 
but it can make people disqualify themselves for their part and what they add to worship in a service. We didn't have a whole team of musicians tonight. We had two people in an acoustic guitar. Yet we can guarantee as soon as there's two people, Jesus is there in the midst. And it's sad that I thank God for expectancy, but we should have expectancy not because of who's on the stage, but because of who's on the throne. And so I just want to encourage you. You might say, but I can't sing. But you know what? You can bring your praise. You can come to church. You know, you can bring your faith, your expectancy. And I just want to encourage you, Rhema Family Church. God is looking for a people who will do that. My, one of my favorite scriptures, Romans 5, chapter 1. I won't go there because of time. It says, having been just where that song came from, Revival Glory. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. That word hope has been so emasculated in our language. Like if, let's be real. Let's be real. Someone goes to you, though, are you coming to the meeting? I hope so. They're not coming. It's like, yeah, I said, this, said to the worship team the other day, it's like, you know, I hope I win lotto. It's like this little wish. But hope in the Bible, the etymology of this word is an earnest expectation. So it's saying that because we, I thank God that we understand faith, that having access by faith, we've learned that. I thank God that we now understand because of the blood of Jesus, because of faith, we have, have stand in the grace of God, praise God. But what happened to the earnest expectation of God's glory? Imagine what would happen if a whole group of people began to stretch their faith during the week. Our Father, I thank you this week at Rhema Family Church. There will be a manifestation of your glory. Father, the lost will be saved. The, the sick will be healed. The, the bound will be set free. Not because of who's preaching, because of who our God is. I want to encourage you. This move of God needs your praise. It needs you. And, and you know what? It's sad sometimes I see as a worship leader, we get people... And they're praising and they start, and especially Aussie and Kiwi men, they get like, I've seen less force and determination in a rugby scrum. Like, you will not make me worship. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a man, I don't show any sort of that. And just towards the end, you just see it, they start tapping their feet, stop that. <laughs> By the end of the service, they've got their hand worship. But, you know, we've run out of time. Imagine if you started stirring up that heart of thanksgiving on the way. And people say, you know, it's not my personality, but in the Old Testament, you had to bring something to church. If you were poor, you bought a dove. The higher your financial status, maybe a dove or a goat or a lamb or a bullet. And you couldn't say... Bringing a sacrifice is not my personality. Because it had nothing to do with your personality. It had to do with obedience. And you might say, well, Jesus is my sacrifice. Yeah, but you can bring your praise. You can bring your faith. You know, talking about honour and respect. You know, we've been so honoured by you guys. You've shown us so much love, so much honour. That you'd have to have been under a rock to not have known in England. There was a pretty big deal in the last 12 months. A new king, first time in 70 years, 70 years. And in that room, there were kings and heads of state. There were, there were billionaires, celebrities, all these people. It didn't matter who they were. There were protocols befitting such a mon monumental occasion. The Bible says we enter his presence. We enter his courts with praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. It is the appropriate honourable, respectful protocol to give our God all of our praise and all of our worship. Church, I'm, I believe I'm preparing you for a move of God. You know, I, I just want this last one. I believe if you came here tonight, you, you're a hungry person. Usually the people who come to the night. So uh, if you wanted a life fluffy message, you... Well, you're in the wrong church for a start. <laughs> you know I mean? That's right. <laughs> you're in a completely wrong church. But I, I'm going to give you a bit of meat. 
I just pray you put it on the shelf if, if it's too much and just, and God will prove you wrong. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not arrogant, am I? No. You know, we're faith people, right? We talk about faith. I'm, I'm Pastor Barry and I both serve on our relative um, national boards of ICFM, which, which was a faith ministry founded by our heroes of faith like Kenneth Hagen and Kenneth Copeland and, and Jerry Savelle and Charles Katz and great men of God. So we believe in faith. But I, it's, something's been really stirring in my heart, especially this last year. So I looked up, even today, I was sitting praying this morning and I thought, I'm going to look up the scriptures that talk about the just living by faith. So if you've got your Bible, Romans 1, 16 to 17. Now you're going to have to listen. If you miss a bit of what I say, you'll totally misunderstand it. But you know what? I, get, I don't get upset about that anymore because Paul had to clarify himself a few times when he said, do you think that we sin so grace may abound? Of course not. It's sad that if, if you're not being misunderstood sometimes, I wonder what you're preaching. All right, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. And that word salvation is not just salvation from hell. It's wholeness, healing, deliverance, prosperity, fulfillment in everything God has created you to be. For everyone who believes, the Jew first, also for the Greek. For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You know, the context of that, he's talking about our right standing with God because of the blood of Jesus. Let's go to the next one, Galatians 3, chapter 10 to 14. I use a lot of scripture. I don't make any apologies for it. I think the Bible preaches itself. We've needed help to misunderstand it. For as many are the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, curse, this is Galatians 3, verse 10 to 14. Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them, that by no one is justified by the law in the sight of God, for the just shall live by faith. Again, we, we, God is, you know, if he says something once, we need to pay attention. This is twice. He's saying, people of faith, understand your right standing with God because of the blood. Let's go to the third one. Now, if, you, if you're going to choke, this is the one you'll choke on. Right, Hebrews 10, verse 14 to 38. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. Now, let me just stop for a sec. Obviously, we look in the mirror and go, hang on. Should have gone to Specsavers. Something's wrong. When you were born again, when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, something supernatural happened on the inside of you. Do you realize that? Let me give you an example of how great that miracle was. I could pull someone out of a wheelchair. The Bible does not say there's necessarily rejoicing in heaven. I could raise someone from the dead. The Bible doesn't say that anyone will rejoice in heaven. But the day one person gives their heart to Jesus, there's a party in heaven. That's the, that's the depth and the magnitude of the miracle that happened inside of you the day you accepted Jesus as your Lord. But guess what? That's our spirit. Our body and our mind were designed by God to be followers. You know, a, child, a, a young child can go to uh, live in Europe and learn four languages and have perfect accents in every language. It's designed, the mind is designed to be a follower. If I got a scientific um, picture of your brain, if I had the right imaging of your brain, they'd see these, these long dark lines which are super highways of thought patterns of you. Like, I'll just give an example. I, my parents are the most beautiful, wonderful people, but my mum was raised in an atmosphere of fear. Right, So yeah, I get born again. My, my spirit is alive to God. The Bible says the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead rose me into newness of life. A miracle says that I was, uh, in Christ I am a new creation. The old has passed, the new has come. A miracle. But it's, right, it's, it's still in the old operating system. 
So that fear was something I needed to, it, guess what? It wasn't coming from my spirit. It wasn't coming from, there's no fear in your spirit. If you're a born-again believer, in you is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's who you really are. And the devil has robbed us from seeing a move of God because we just associate ourselves with the old operating system. And so, like, I was raised in fear. I was in America ministering. Oh, God love my mum. I love it. She's wonderful. Please don't think I'm putting her down. But she rings me. Mum, what's up? She said, I just had to check you're okay. There was, a, there was a plane crash. I went, oh, that's terrible. Where was it? In India. <laughs> I'm like, Mum, I told you I'm in America. She said, oh, I know, but I just had to check. She says, I always fly to India on the way to America. Because the default of thinking was towards fear. So as a new believer, I had to recognize that's not who I am. That's the old Pete. That's the old Peter Robertson. That's the one who, you know, I died to him. The real me's not got fear. So even when those impulses come and those, and those defaults come, I have to, if I'm going to honor the blood, I have to say, that's not who I am. That's not who God has created me to be. That's not who he died for me to be. And, and, and our, like so much of our body, it's just muscle memory. Who remembers when you first learned to drive a manual car? Oh my God, clang, 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 clang. You know, my driving instructor said, change them, don't rearrange them. You know, just <laughs> you had to think of everything. But you don't even think anymore. Why? It's all muscle memory. Do you realize a lot of the bondages that people struggle with as believers, it's just muscle memory. And you need to recognize that's not who you are. You can retrain the flesh just as it was retrained the bad way. A, 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 a friend of ours, Pastor Margaret Court, greatest tennis player of all time, even though Mr. Dokovic has just equaled her singles record, he's nowhere near her 62 total Grand Slam titles. And she used to tell me, she said, Peter, my, my coach would have me hit backhands into a, like a one squeeze meter square in the corner of the of the um court hundred times and if i missed one i had to start again why training muscle memory so they just did it you know we, we sometimes are associating with this flesh and mind that is designed to be led by who you are in your spirit that's who you really are do you know the bible even says that he who hears my word and does it doesn't do it is like a person who looks in a mirror and walks away and forgets what they look like we're supposed to look in the mirror and say in the name of Jesus you are a child of God you are not bound by the weaknesses of your flesh in fact you have the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead inside you to ch to to walk in his power and his glory this is not if you see a sin you should be saying this is not who I am and in the name of Jesus I refuse to allow it anymore Amen. the Lord spoke to me one of these powerful words when I was praying he said entwine and align you know the scripture where David says those who um, in the Bible where it says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength that word wait is a Hebrew word quaver it literally means to, to entwine and I love that imagery because a chain is only as strong as its weakest link but when you entwine a rope it all becomes one do you know when we worship when we praise his strength becomes entwined in ours. And if you could just see yourself in the spirit, if you could see who Jesus has created you to be, who you are now in him, you'd be able to look at those areas in your flesh that don't line up the word of God and be able to just align and go, no, this is what I'm going to do. I've seen people that have been addicted to heroin their whole life walk out free because they recognize this is who I am does that mean we don't have boundaries obviously you have boundaries are smart you break your arm you put it in a cast dummy <laughs> why to protect yourself from hurting yourself 
If you've got an area in your flesh that is being a bit of a is is a bit of a struggle, put boundaries around yourself. That's why we're supposed to have have relationships where we can be there for each other. Go, how you doing, mate? I'm praying for you. You know, just some smart things, men. I, I, there's things on my phone I couldn't look at if I wanted to. Why do you do that, Peter? Because I'm just not dumb. I put boundaries on myself to protect myself because in the past that was a weakness. Now I thank God it's a strength, but I'm not going to be dumb. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, we got to the first part of about 24 scriptures. Being sanctified, the Holy Spirit witnessed to us after he had said, this is my covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds I will write them. You, the real you, wants to serve God. Gosh, the day you make that switch in your heart and realize that your joy and your happiness is in him, you'll see so much change. Their sins and lawless deeds I'll remember no more. Now, where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. I love that. Pastor even mentioned that by the blood of Jesus, we can have boldness to come into his presence. You know what? When you're struggling with, you, with your flesh, that's when you need to run to him the most. That's the difference between David and Saul. Saul got into a mess. He went to witchcraft. Which witchcraft means the arm of the flesh. All through scripture, witchcraft is associated with, in other words, you trying to sort it out on yourself. Where David was like, Lord, have pity. That was the difference. You need to run to him, having boldness by, the, by a new and living way he consecrated for us. Through the veil that is his flesh, having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and a full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. If you could see that, because of the blood of Jesus, we can come boldly into the presence of Almighty God. And do you know what? When we get under condemnation, this is going to be hard for some of you to hear. You dishonor the blood. Again, you know, you're a fool if you think I'm preaching, just do what you like, it doesn't matter. No, <laughs> anyone with a quarter of a brain, just go and look on the streets, it doesn't work. We were designed to walk with God. We were actually made, it's impossible for any human being to live a fulfilled life. Even if hell, eternity was taken out of the equation, we were designed to walk with God here on earth. In every area of our lives. We need to run to him. And this, you know what I like? It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope. That is our earnest expectation without wavering for he who promised is faithful. I wonder how many of us do that when we come into the presence of the Lord? How many of us are unwavering in, Father, I thank you that you are here and that I'm accepted in your presence as your child, accepted in the beloved as the righteousness of God, not because of me, but because of your blood. And here's one that will throw some people a curveball. You know, the very next thing he says after the greatest statement of grace in the whole Bible. Why is it, why is it the greatest? Look who is it written to, the Hebrews. These were people that Pastor Barry mentioned it this morning. Their high priest went in fearfully to the presence of God and he might die. So this is the greatest statement of faith in the grace of God in the whole Bible. And the very next breath is, and forsake not the gathering together. I tell you what, in grace, I believe we need to gather more than ever. Thank you for your deafening amen on that point. That went out really well. But. No, seriously, God, church, we sometimes think we're here for God, for church. And yes, we do. We bring our honor and we respect and things. But do you know what? He made church for us. We need each other. We need each other. I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for the brothers and the sisters and the men and women of God who I had met and had connection with and not just friendship but covenant relationship that happens in a church community like this. We need this. 
We need this. Now, I'm going I'm to say something now that maybe you don't understand, but I think it says, For if we sin willfully after we've received a knowledge of the truth, there's no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Do you know why he said this? Because he was talking to Jews who were accepting Jesus than going back to the works of the law. He was talking to people who in, was, were being preached by Paul that you are a new creation in Christ. You can boldly come to the throne room of God because of the blood of Jesus to honor the blood, to honor Jesus in his perfect sacrifice. And they were walking away from that going, okay, now I've got to go and do the temple sacrifices. And you read the language of Paul, it's very, very strong. I won't, because of time, I won't go. This is, this is Hebrews chapter 10, 14 to 38. We need to honor the blood. We need to honor the blood. And I honestly believe that when we allow the devil's lies to value us of who he's created us to be, we are not honoring the blood of Jesus. And I feel there's some people here today, you have gone, your breakthrough is on the other side of you recognizing who you are in Jesus rather than associating who you are with the weakness of your flesh. Inside every single one of you, Paul talked to the, the Corinthian church that were a pagan church who had no religious upbringing whatsoever, that their religion was you went to temple prostitutes. Do you know how he dealt with it? dealt with it don't you know you're the temple of the holy spirit he made them recognize something supernatural that happened you don't do that anymore because of the the wonderful sacrifice of our lord jesus christ because of the same spirit that was hovered over the waters and god said light be and light was is in you now and if you read down this a little further after paul talks about how we need to honor the blood and just, you know, sometimes the greatest act of faith is just going, Father, even though I don't feel it, I thank you because of your blood, I am your child. And I thank you because of your blood, I have right standing with you and I can come confidently into your presence because of the blood. Sometimes that takes more faith than praying for a person to come out of a wheelchair. But when we do it, and it says, the just shall live by faith. And this is the part I want to get. You might be we're going, where are you going with all this, Peter? This latest, this move of God that has started is going to be so glorious, but God will not share his glory with anyone. I've been in wonderful moves of God, seen like waves of the Spirit flow so nobody could stand. Every person healed. People just... It's happening in America. We just got back from ICFM in America where they're, where they're saying, uh, Brother Copeland bought Mario Murillo a 5,000 plus seat tent, right? And they have to start church early because all the gang members are filling the thing an hour before church. The Christians can't get in. They can't get in because the gang members are coming to hear about this Jesus who will set them free who'll break the bondage of drugs and vice and all the rubbish that's destroyed them and unconditional love when all their lives have been told you deserve to go to hell and the Christians can't even get in. And they say, Mario's getting these calls. Well, you might as well start church because she full. <laughs> this glorious move of the Spirit. But God is the one who's going to get the glory. And I thank God that we are a people that we should expect miracles. We should expect manifestations of his glory. We should expect to see. We should expect to see the dead raised. We should expect to see the blind see the deaf hear. But when we do, we recognize it's because of his blood. It's because of his sacrifice. It's because of him. And so all the glory goes to him. The funny thing is people think a grace teaching means that we're trying to live a, a lascivious life. No, it's because we, we earnestly desire the holiness and the glory of God. And when we honour the blood, God moves. 
Do you realize even our foundation, I see people, and this is in my spirit, some of you have been praying for things for a long time. I did. When Christy and I got married, my gosh, we didn't have enough money to pay attention. We were, the Greek word is broke. B-R-O-K-E. No money. I've been tithing for years. Christy had been tithing for years. We'd sowed, we'd given, we'd been believing, standing our faith. But you know what? Something clicked when we recognized that all of our blessing, yes, we weren't sowing t- to be blessed. We were sowing because in Christ we were blessed. We were sowing because not to get God's favor. We were sowing because we all of a sudden recognized because of the blood of Jesus and our honoring of that blood, we were the favored of the Lord. And that even in Galatians chapter 2 to 16, it says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the Lord, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, no. That's another scripture. Sorry. I didn't get there. If you read that, write that down. Galatians 2.16. This is where Paul confronts Peter for uh, not expressing the truth of the gospel. In other words, he was trying to pretend to be a Jew, try and play the religious system so people wouldn't get upset with him. And Paul said this amazing thing. He said, even we. So here's the apostle Paul. He says later, he says, there's... No one has done as much as me, not but me, but the grace of God. He'd been shipwrecked. He'd been beaten. He'd been flogged about four times. And they believe those those floggings were enough usually to kill a man. And yet all of this he did for the gospel, yet he was understanding, even I have to believe that my favor and my grace and my faith work because I'm in Christ and I'm honoring the blood. And so, sorry, Galatians chapter 3, 26 to 29 says for, yeah, sorry, Galatians 3, 16. It says, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. And he does not say, and to seeds as of many, but of one. And to your seed who is Christ. So Paul's saying all these promises. Yes, they're out, but they, were to, they weren't to us. They were to Jesus. Now, but further on in that same chapter, in verse 26, he says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For if many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek nor the slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Didn't Paul say in Romans chapter 8 that you are more than a conqueror? If you've got a religious spirit, just prepare to manifest right now. But um, I, I watched a boxing match a little while ago. Tyson Fury won this match. He won 40 million US dollars. Not a bad. For, <laughs> no, it wasn't even a half an hour's work, right? He's a conqueror. He's the champion. He got the $40 million, but one thing I know, that man is married. Yeah. You imagine Mr. Mr. Tyson, walk, Mr. World Champion walks home, he's got a $40 million check. If he's married like any rest of us, and I guarantee he's the same, his wife said, thank you very much. <laughs> so guess what? He's a conqueror. She's more than a conqueror. Why is that? Because he won the battle and she walks in the victory and the spoils because of Jesus. That is honoring the blood. We need to recognize when you come tonight, and we're going to open the altar in a minute, and you're believing for healing, you need to recognize that promise was fulfilled in Jesus. And because you're in Christ, he was the conqueror, but you're more than a conqueror. If, you, if you're coming and you're struggling with an addiction that's been holding you captive, Jesus won your freedom completely. And that you are more than a conqueror because you're in him. Yeah, you know, the Bible says in Hebrews 6, not laying again the foundation of repentance of dead works. Dead works were when we thought we had to work to get something from God. And it says not laying again. It doesn't mean we forget it. The foundation is the most important part of a building. Years ago in New Zealand, I did a youth meeting 
and they had this game called Rock and Sock'em where you had like, it was like those gladiator things, a big inflatable gladiator pit, and you had these big mallets. And the youth pastor, he was a big, young, strapping guy, and he was going to show, show the old fella in front of all of his kids who was boss. But I knew how the game worked. It had everything to do with your foundation. So I just lowered my gravity and I just stood firm. He's taking these wild haymakers on one foot. And, you know, I just block it. Pop, pop. And as soon as I was ready, I just went pop, bang. <laughs> it's got everything to do with your foundation. Our foundation is the finished work of the cross in the blood of Jesus. How much more faith do you think will come alive in our spirit when we're standing on the right foundation? Christy, my faith to see the blessing now, which is seriously beyond what either of us could have asked or imagined, is because we are now standing on the firm foundation of the finished work of the cross and we honour the blood. And yes, we call for, and we speak to the mountain in the name of Jesus, but we thank God. It's his grace, his authority, his power, and that we are working because of what he has made us in Jesus' name. Church, it's time to arise and see yourself as Jesus has made you. I'll finish with this one scripture. I know we've gone a bit long, but we're going home tomorrow. So, <laughs> Milton, lock the door. <laughs> Last scripture. The great warfare scripture it says 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. So that's 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. It says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Pastor Barry talked about that this morning. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Praise God. In your life right now, there is God-ordained mighty power to pull down every stronghold that will ever face you. In the name of Jesus, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, I want to stop there. I used to always confess that as taking every thought captive to Christ. Like, I take that captive to Jesus. It doesn't say, it says captive to the obedience of Christ. So when I'm facing something that's wrong in my body, I take my thought captive. You know what? Because of the obedience of Jesus, sickness has no place in my life in the name of Jesus. And I take that thought captive. If there's a lack in any area of my life, I take that a captive to the obedience of Jesus who, sa who says oh, he will meet all of my needs according to his riches and glory. That's honouring the blood. That's honouring what he's done. Even if I see an area in my flesh, like if, as it, I'm just going to be really um, upfront. As a man, sometimes I, I, I always used to struggle in my thought life and I'd have unclean thoughts that weren't aligned with who I was in Jesus. But when I began to realize, I take that thought captive to the obedience of Jesus, who's made me righteous, who's put his spirit in my life, who gives life to my mortal body, who's, who gives me the mind of Christ, who has made me his child, who's filled me with his spirit. You know, the more I did that, I felt those thoughts just like, whoa, I'm going away now. The more you renew your mind to the finished work and obedience of Jesus, the less power the devil will have in your life. Can we stand to our feet? Rhema family. I believe God is preparing you for a move of his spirit like you've never seen before. I pray, if you can just take one thing home tonight, every single one of you, because of the wonderful, perfect sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, has been given earth-shattering authority. Every one of you. You might go, you've got to be kidding me. I would just speak to you and say, in the name of Jesus, see yourself as you really are. Can we close our eyes just for a moment? I'm just going to speak Scripture straight out of the Word for you. 
This is for every person that's accepted Jesus as his Lord and Saviour. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Because you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old has passed, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, Because he who knew no sin became sin, you could become the righteousness of God in him. Ephesians says that you are now accepted in the beloved. Romans tells us, in Romans chapter 6, that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead has resurrected you to new life and that we live in this new life by that same glory that rose Jesus from the dead. That's every believer that honors the blood. That God has surrounded you with his favor. That you can come boldly to the throne room of God. Father, we just thank you. Father, we just thank you. Just thank him for the blood. Thank you, Jesus. I pray next week I hear from Pastor Barry, it was the most powerful service that you guys have ever had because there's a group of people that are saying, Father, because we honor the blood, we are expecting a manifestation of your glory. Now, if there's anyone here and you've got any symptoms in your body, I want you to come down because we want to pray for you. But I want you to receive and honor the blood that Jesus paid for this.